So why you need to be xylene free or why you want to be xylene free is what we're going to talk about today. And, you know, we refer to xylene as a general chemical. We call it a clearant, all right? And um, there's been some discussion on the web recently on why is xylene considered that term? Why is it called a clearant? And so before we get into really the topic of xylene versus xylene substitutes, kind of want to tell you where that term clearant really came from. It's really quite, quite old in the literature. And it turns out that the answer is based on the refractive index of xylene, okay? And so what is this refractive index? The refractive index is based on the fact that light travels at different speeds, all right? Um, it's given a numerical number. We refer to air as that the refractive index is one, and then you can, the physicist can go and calculate the refractive index of how fast does light travel through different media. We know what glass is 1.5, water 133, diamonds 2.4. What that means is that when light travels through water, that 1.33 doesn't mean faster, it actually means that light is traveling through water 1.33 times slower than it travels through air. And the slower light travels, the light is bent. And you can see it here in this one example here. I just took a pencil, went into the lab, and put the pencil into a beaker of water. The top part you can see is the air, and then the bottom part is the pencil in water. And you can see it looks like the pencil, when you're looking at it, it looks like the pencil is bent. All right, well, the pencil's not bent in the water, but what it is, it's the refractive index of water is 1.33, light is traveling much slower, it makes a, therefore, the slowerness, it makes it look bent, all right? So that's what refractive index is. Well, refractive index also has some another characteristic. If you have two items and the refractive index is identical, all right, the item becomes invisible, okay? This is not how magicians do things, but we know as a fact, xylene and fixed proteins that you find in your tissue section, they both have the same refractive index. So that means if you take your fixed proteins, you put it into xylene, it becomes invisible. And look, this is what we're going to do right here. Here's a paraffin section, all right? It's got a, that really is a piece of gut there, but it's just a piece of the para, typical paraffin section, all right? I take that slide and I'm going to put it into a Kaplan jar of xylene, all right? And there it is. That glass slide, that B931, is sitting in there. You cannot see the paraffin section because the paraffin section and xylene have the same refractive index. It becomes invisible. It becomes clear. I take that slide. I move it into 100% alcohol. Bingo. There is your tissue section because alcohol and fixed proteins don't have the same refractive index. Go forward into water, bingo, you can see it again, all right? Since xylene and the xylene has the same refractive index as fixed proteins, the tissue becomes invisible, translucent, clear. We can see right through it, it's invisible, and that's where that term comes from. Xylene is termed a clearant for our tics, in terms of how we use it in histology, and that's where that term uh, has come from clearant. Now, some people say, well, you'll hear in discussion that, well, it's called clear because it clears out the lipids. Yeah, you could say that too, all right? But it really does get its name based on the refractive index of it. So, let's start talking about our clearant, the xylene, okay? And this is what we like it to do in histology. We have it do quite a few nice things technically. We want it to move that paraffin wax, it is advantage to us during processing that it helps us to remove the fats, the lipids, because when you go through tissue processing, formalin's not taking out that fatty tissue. Alcohol really is a poor lipid remover as well. So it really is xylene that's dissolving out all the lipids for us, all right? Um, we want it to be totally compatible with the stains. We don't want it after we've done the, made our paraffin sections and you finally put 
hematoxylin, eosin. We don't want it to react with the stain slide. We want it to be totally compatible with our mounting media because whether you're using glass cover slips or a film, you want that mounting media, that film, to be compatible with the xylene. We want it to evaporate quickly. Some of you may have had already some experience with xylene substitutes that are oily and they make it a great problem with cover slipping. Um, environmentally, sure it would be nice if it was recycled. That keeps your bills down, that you can recycle it. And believe it or not, xylene does have some water solubility. All right, we'll talk about that very shortly. Um, that water solubility, meaning that xylene can hold small degrees of water, um, there's pros and cons to that that we're going to be definitely talking about in this next short time period. Now, what we do not like about xylene is it is known that the longer the tissue sits in xylene, the tissues become dry and brittle. All right, we'll know about that soon. Um, xylene also is the cause of eosin bleeding off of our stained slides. So those are two technical things that make xylene a disadvantage. Um, it's odor. Um, in histology, um, we're quite um, accustomed to the order, odor of it, so we may not think it's a horrible smell. Also on a technical level, um, xylene is categorized as a flammable liquid. That means you must store it in a flammable cabinet. You've got those rules by the fire marshal in terms of how much you can have and where it can be stored. As it's being shipped to you, it is considered also by the Department of Transportation to be flammable and you are paying added costs for shipping. Not only to have it shipped, but the manufacturer must package it in approved shipping boxes and such. And then there's the health factors. The health factors have been known for a long time. And this slide right here is just the data since 1983 going up to 2013. I've just listed here the health hazards that have been documented in humans. This is not data on mice, rats, guinea pigs. These are documented papers of the health effects on us humans. And you can see it goes through all type of things. It affects our blood, reaction times, how you sleep. And these are all definitely rec highly recommended and acceptable journals that these things have been published in. So the health hazards have been documented and they continue to be documented in humans. So we know we've got a health hazard with xylene vapors. And right here, it's just kind of indicating different parts of the body, whether it's hearing, sleep, blood, prenatal toxicity. Um, people have always been concerned working in the histology lab, um, females have when they become pregnant in terms of do, what assignments do they now have. So let's take a look at the chemistry of xylene because we want to know what the xylene actually is because a xylene substitute, as its name says, it's a substitute for xylene. So what do we have to, what characteristics do we have to replace so we can continue to do our technical work the same way? So if you ever took organic chemistry, you know that xylene that we use in the lab, it's not really xylene, it's really xylene. Because xylene can be in a chemical form three different chemical forms. It's based on that ring structure, the benzene ring. And then on the ring, we put two methyl groups. That's the CH3. Now, the methyl groups can be in different locations on the ring, and that's where it gets these different names. O stands for orthoxylene. The um, methyl groups are put on like 12 noon, 1 o'clock, the first two. If we skip a spot, that's called metaxylene, and then we have paraxylene. So what we buy is actually the label should, if it's correctly labeled, it's not saying it's xylene, it's xylenes, because you have orthoxylene, metaxylene, and paraxylene. So we have all three in there. Now, also what we have in that bottle, besides xylenes, we also have the molecule ethyl benzene. It's totally acceptable. The quantity of ethyl 
ethyl benzene will vary depending upon your manufacturer. It can be as low as 4% in there. It could be as high as 12 to 15% in there. That all will depend upon the quality of xylenes that you have purchased. But the ethyl benzene is not causing us any side effects, any um, technical disadvantages. We have developed our protocols based on xylenes and ethyl benzene. And ethyl benzene's properties in terms of cover slipping and processing are pretty much identical to the xylenes. But just to let you know, you are this is what is in your xylenes. Um, for those of you who do distillation of your xylenes right now, after you do your recycling, you actually get out a higher quality because the ethyl benzene generally doesn't come over. So you may start off with ortho, meta, para, ethyl benzene in your brand new stuff, but when you have recycled, only the ortho, meta, and para generally come over, depending upon the boiling point that you've got set on your machine. So that's, those are the chemicals we're dealing with. I had talked to you about that xylene does hold, have a water solubility. When you take a look at your safety data sheet, all right, it will say under water solubility, it says practically insoluble. It does not say zero because xylene can hold a very small degree of water. When I'm talking about that it can hold a small degree of water, it's the same thing. If you take alcohol and you put a little bit of water into it, the water gets absorbed between the alcohol molecules. It doesn't float. The same thing with xylene. If you take a container of xylene and you put the smallest amount of water in there, it doesn't dry, it doesn't start floating at the top. And the amount that these that the xylene can hold is there on the chart. Now this is a very small quantity. Look, metaxylene can hold 162 milligrams per liter. I mean that's an extremely tiny drop, and that's and that's for a full liter. So 162, 178, 198. This is why we say that their xylene has is practically insoluble. If you put one mL in, you're going to see that xylene can hold a small amount, but then the excess is just going to float. Now what does this mean? in terms of xylene, in terms of water solubility for us in technical. What it is, if xylene can hold water, that means if you put a piece of tissue into xylene and the tissue's got some water in it, the xylene's going to pull it out. It's the same way that alcohol dries out tissue. Xylene has the same capability because of its water solubility is to dry out the tissue. And the type of water it's going to remove, it's what's known as bound water. In our tissue, in your piece of raw tissue, you have really two types of water molecule in there. We have water molecule that's known as free water, and there's also water molecule in, in the tissue known as bound water. Now, to help you visualize bound water, free water, take a piece of steak. Take a piece of steak, raw steak there that you've got there on the bottom left, and if you really squeeze it hard, pound on it, you'll see some liquid come out. That liquid that's coming out is what's known as the free water. The tissue itself is still moist because the protein molecules, the carbohydrate molecules, still have water attached to them, and that's what's known as bound water. Can we remove the bound water? Yes, we can. We can strip it off. One of the easiest way to strip off bound water is to heat it. And that's what we do when we make when we grill and take care of our steaks. And you can notice this when you remove the bound water, since the, the bound water is acting like insulation. You remove the bound water and now all everybody else is able to cross link and things start shrinking and drying out. All right. And that's what happens with either applying heat or in our case, we apply chemicals. We can dry out the tissue by putting it into alcohol, putting it into xylene. The way we see the removal of bound water histologically is on underneath the microscope. We all know about what it's like to when the tissue's been overprocessed. We call it overprocessed. What's happening during overprocessing is we have removed the bound water. Now, most of the bound water that's being removed is being removed by alcohols. 
We have plenty of alcohols in terms of our tissue processor. But after it leaves that final 100 of tissue processing, it goes into xylene. And if you're in that xylene too long, that xylene will start ripping out some of that bound water too. And the tissue becomes dry and brittle. We see that underneath the microscope in terms of the parched earth effect. The picture on the top right shows cracking. Eventually, you will start modifying the tissues on another molecular layer level, and you'll actually will get different types of staining. Now, the bottom left is a piece of um, bone marrow that the text had heat on every station. So it was like overcooking it. And in that case, we changed the chemistry at the nuclei, at the, at, with the nuclei and in the cytoplasm so much that it was a different molecule and it stained totally different. We totally lost all the eosin staining. I have a picture of the same bone mirror where the tech literally turned off the heat on every station and it was a perfect picture where you had the pinks and blues. So a characteristic of over of excess heat is commonly known in terms of the tissue section looking too blue. So that's what happens when we remove the bound water. And it can happen. We can continue to remove the bound water, not only in the alcohols, but in the xylene. So that's a characteristic of xylene that we don't like, that it can dry out the tissue. So how do we prevent the removal of bound water? Well, in tissue processing, we always use graded alcohols. That's why we have maybe a 70, 95, 100. All right, so we control how the bound water is coming out because the graded series of alcohols is to help us slowly get rid of all the free water. And then we just have enough time in the hundreds to displace the 95. We don't want excess time in that hundred that we're gonna start displacing the 95 and then, oh, while it's sitting in there, the hundred says, oh, look at that bound water. I'm just gonna rip it off that protein. That's what happens when we over dehydrate. So that's great. Graded, graded alcohols we have control over, but we don't have control over the xylene. We use xylene 100% pure. We don't have 95% xylene. Most of us use it full force, so we have 100%. So xylene does a wonderful job. We give it an A-plus score that it can remove the lipids, but we've got to watch our time in there because the longer it sits in there, the more time it's going to remove the bound water. This is a challenge for all of us in histology. When you only have one tissue processor and you're putting both small and large specimens on one processor, they not only are, have the size difference, but then you also will have tissues of different makeup. You'll have the breast tissue in there right next to the little tiny liver core biopsy. All those guys need different amounts of time. So if you've got your tissue processor set up so you can make sure that the breasts come out and you've got making sure it's in there enough time to get all the fat out of the breast, your livers are going to be overcooked. So that's a disadvantage with xylene. It's all or nothing. And that makes it challenging for us with, with just single processors. Another problem that we have with xylene is in staining. Now, we don't have problems with xylene removing too much wax. We use it in staining. First station is to, de to remove the wax. And that's fine. If it ends up staying in there too long, it can't remove too much. It's only can remove the amount of wax that it can remove. And it's an excellent lipid remo wax removal. It's petroleum solvent. Both of them are wax is a petroleum solvent, xylene is petroleum solvent. There's that rule in chemistry, like dissolves like. So the two things dissolve each other. Where we have problems with xylene is in staining, is at the end, all right, right before cover slipping. The eye roll of xylene at the end is to be so it's a compatible solvent with our mounting media for cover slipping. Now remember, xylene can hold a certain degree of water. One of the problems, and especially at this time of year where it's really humid in the Midwest, all right, if your final 100, okay, is not 100 because of humidity, you now are going to take, take that tissue section. It's going to go from 99.9% alcohol into xylene. Well, remember, xylene can hold a certain amount of water. And we take advantage of that on a regular basis. But when that final 100 is really too much water, it goes over. Xylene can't do it. Xylene can't hold on to the excess water. 
but xylene can't displace it. And that water, xylene, is stuck underneath the mounting media. As it's stuck underneath the mounting media, and the mounting media hasn't totally solidified the eosin that is in the tissue section sees the water above it. It's soluble in it. And it leaves the tissue section, and we call that eosin bleeding. And you see that picture right there. Shows a picture of a tissue section that the final 100 wasn't anhydrous. It had some water in it. You can't see it when you cover slip, but just in a matter of half hour, definitely days, you go take a look at it, and you can see how the eosin found that water and just left the tissue section. It's bleeding out because the mounting media is drying. It's contracting. Now, another thing that could happen when you don't have, when you still have water underneath, and you may not see it. The pathologist sees this immediately. What they'll find is that with that small degree of water, while they're trying to read the slides, they can't read it. It's not sharp. The mixture of mounting media and water and xylene, all right, is a mixture that the objective of the microscope does not zoom in on, and instead you get hazy looking slides. So I have three pictures there. The first picture shows a piece of epidermis of the skin, perfect, nice and sharp and focused. The one in the middle, I have the word hazy on it. If you had to take a look at 100 slides like that, you would usually be using your fine focus and trying to make it as sharp as the one up above. So it's a little bit hazy. The one underneath is totally unreadable. The bottom two pictures are pictures of what it's like when your final 100 is not 100 and you get development of hazy slides. So if you hear the complaint from the pathologist saying the slides are hazy today, don't go troubleshoot your stain. Go back and replace your alcohols because that's the cause of it. So as I already have told you, fine alcohol is not 100%. You get these side effects, eosin bleeding and hazy slides. So how does this really happen? Why isn't your final alcohol not 100%? Well, most of it is just a very common one. It's just simple carryover. You've got eosin, all right? All the eosins that are on the market are made with diluted alcohol. Let's say it's 0.5% and 95% alcohol. You've got water in your eosin. You go into the first 100. You're carrying over eosin in it. If you see pink color of your in your alcohols, you've got eosin in there. And if you have eosin in there, you have water. So you have carryover. I'll go back here. It's due to carryover, and it also could just be due to the humidity in the room. Here in Michigan, probably in another couple of weeks, people are going to start having problems that their 100% is not staying 100% because the humidity in the room. It changes their 100%. So you've got to be careful there. Good practices. You always want three stations of alcohol, one minute each, with three stations of your clearant. Your first clearance always going to have carryover of the final 100. So you want to make sure that what's on that slide is pure xylene and not with any degree of alcohol in it. So we have our xylene. We know it can hold. That's an advantage. Okay. Xylene, if you do some calculations, xylene can hold 0.02% water. It may not seem a lot. But let me tell you, when you have humidity in the air, we don't we we are enjoying that we can use not a hundred percent but ninety nine point nine eight percent. So what do we want our xylene substitutes to do? That's what xylene's doing for us. So we want to do xylene substitutes. What do we want? We want that it's gotta remove the wax, it's gotta be compatible for the wax so we can make paraffin blocks, and it better be able to remove it after we've cut it. We want it to remove the lipids. We want so that we have fatty tissue. It's got to have the compatibility with stains and mounting media. It's got to evaporate quickly. We're used to that. But on the same sense, we don't want it to dry out the tissue. Why have that disadvantage? We want it to have some water solubility. We don't want that eosin bleeding. We want, for financial reasons, let it be recycled. Let it be safe to use health-wise. And let it be cheap. You can't afford 
sometimes people do not pay for safety. So what are the chemical option families that we have for xylene substitutes? Over the years, and xylene substitutes came very popular in the mid-1980s. And these, all, these are the three that have held their head above water and have maintained themselves. We have a chemical family that's known as aliphatic hydrocarbons. That's just a fancy way. Hydrocarbons means they're made up of carbons and hydrogens. Aliphatic means it's a straight chain. It's not a ring structure. It's a straight chain. We'll talk about each one of these in detail. The second one that's very um, popular are, is the chemical family known as terpenes. And the specific one that we're using in histology is limonene. Limonene is orange oil. And as you can see, it is a ring structure. It's not based on the benzene ring, though. So it's got its safety. And it's got, as you can see there, it's got a little side group with a double bond. That double bond against the CH2 can give us some problems that I'll talk about. And then the third group is the chlorinated hydrocarbons. The oldest one that's been around for centuries is chloroform. And um, there were others that were in the 1980s, um, 111 trichloroethane. Those have been eliminated. They may still be made, but those were ones that um, environmentally was labeled and making holes in the ozone layers. So really the... Um, World organizations have actually banned them from manufacturing. If they are manufactured, they have such taxes put on them that there's no way that anybody would even consider buying them. So chloroform is really the only one in histology in the chlorinated hydrocarbon. So problem with chloroform is um, it is carcinogenic. We've got a, we've got dear old formaldehyde in the lab. That's a potential carcinogen. We really don't need to add to our health. Um, if, if your ventilation isn't good, you'll be finding yourself asleep and making it even more difficult for our equipment. It can attack the gaskets and soften them that are used on the equipment. So it will depend upon your manufacturer. Some have given permission for chloroform on the machine. A great deal of them have not. Um, and like I said, this is the only chlorinated hydrocarbon that's still available because the others have really been ruled out because of um, their destruction of the ozone layer. Terpenes, this is the one that smells from citrus, all right? Limonene is orange oil. Um, it's not recommended to be recycled, mainly because it's a plant product. And with plant products, since it's not synthetically made, there's a lot of molecules in there that makes it difficult to realize how to do the setting. It is um, a skin irritant, a sensitizer. You're not going to find any of the xylene substitutes being totally safe. Because to be totally safe, the only thing that can be is water. And that's not going to be it. What the limonene and all the terpenes need, whether it's orange oil, lemon oil, lime oil, whatever, it must have an antioxidant added to it. Remember I showed you that picture. Go back here. Here's the limonene. I showed you those double bonds there. Shortly after limonene came out, people were realizing after they were cover slipping, they'd go take a look, and definitely days later, they'd go pull the slide, and their eosin was gone. Because the eosin dye molecule reacted with that free-ended double bond there. So it was not, it had a problem. Um, but they realized if they added a molecule, an antioxidant molecule, to the limonene, or if they had an antioxidant in their mounting media, that the eosin fading did not go away. But that's another reason why it can't be recycled. Because when you recycle, let's say, a limonene with antioxidant, and you did figure out a recycling process, the antioxidant doesn't come over, isn't recycled. So you'd have to add the antioxidant to use it. Here are a group of, here's a list of what's on the market right now. And may, uh, this is, I did my best to include everybody out there. But all of these names, I mean, some of them make it common sense. D-limonene was really one of the first, same as well as Hemo D. So all of these guys, all right, smell like oranges or the citrus families. Some of them have added to them um, mineral spirits because you know, orange oil is very oily and greasy, and that would make it difficult during cover slipping. So they, some of them, there's, there's some variation on the brands out there. So if you do like 
the citrus odor. You got good ventilation because there is such thing as too much of a good thing. And you've tried one of these limonene based products and it was too oily or greasy. I encourage you to go try others because the formulations from one manufacturer to the other will vary, okay, depending upon if they've added something to it to cut the greasiness or the oiliness of it. But I would say probably the most popular aliphatic hydrocarbons that's out on the market right now, and silane substitutes on the market, is the aliphatic hydrocarbons. These guys are practically odorless. You are going to have to practically put your nose right on top of the fluid level to smell it. All right. It can be easily recycled. Uh, the aliphatic hydrocarbons that are out there, they all vary. The way they vary is because of the length of the chain. And it's well known. The length of the chain will determine, one, if it's flammable, flam, flammable or not. If you get one long enough, it's not even flammable. So you'll have a great advantage of how to be storing it in the lab and how it's in that when it's being shipped to you, you're not paying that added cost. If it's real short, it's going to be flammable. If you are, the length of the chain also is going to determine if it's oily or not. The longer the chain, the oilier it is. And in fact, if that chain is so long, it's going to actually be a solid at room temperature. The wax that we use, paraffin wax is an aliphatic hydrocarbon. It's just that it's such a long molecule that at room temperature, it's a solid. But if you shorten it, it'll be liquid between solid and a nice liquid flow is something that's going to be oily or greasy. So here's a list here of the various aliphatic hydrocarbons that are out on the market. They practically are all different on the lengths of the chain. And in fact, these aliphatic hydrocarbons, when they're purchased, they're purchased as a blend. I mean, one of them may be having a blend of carbons between 8 and 12. Somebody else may have picked a blend between 12 and 16. And all of those make a difference on literally how oily it may or greasy it'll feel. There's half of these that you don't, they have the same viscosity as xylene. They have no oiliness at all, but others may have a little bit of oiliness to them. Some of them are flammable at room temperature. Others are not. Once again, the manufacturers went out and found the characteristics in the aliphatic hydrocarbon that they wanted to mimic xylene as perfectly as possible. They wanted the best of xylene, but they did not want the flammability of xylene. So let's take a look on what xylene substitutes, what we want them to do, and how do we use them, okay? Obviously, the first step we wanted to do technically for us, all right, we wanted to remove the wax. If you follow the general good practices of deparaffinization that was set up for xylene, which was three stations of xylene, three minutes each, the xylene substitutes have been tested and marketed to do it that way. So successful results with xylene substitutes, and then I don't care if it's chloroform, aliphatic hydrocarbons, limonenes, they all perform perfect in terms of removing of wax. What about removing the tissue lipids? We've got those fatty lipomas coming in. We've got the breast tissue. We've got to have that xylene or xylene substitute, remove the wax from the tissue section. It's got to, all right? Well, the aliphatic hydrocarbons and the limonenes, chloroform is really strong. I don't think we want to talk about chloroform because of the carcinogenic effect. But the other guys, they're much more gentle acting than xylene, so they need more time. But that's okay, especially on the tissue processor. You can have two to three stations of xylene because as it's sitting in there, these aliphatic hydrocarbons won't dry the tissue out because they don't have that characteristic. Here's take a look here. This is why they won't dry the tissue out. If we went and took a look and got this from the safety data sheets, you get this information from the safety data sheets. What's the water solubility? I put in there what the water solubility was for xylene. So you can see how much with that high number, 162, <clears throat> 178, 198, you can see that's a higher number, which means xylenes can hold more water. That means they can hold more of that bound water they've ripped out. Take a look at chloroform. Chloroform can only hold eight, can't hold much water. Limonene, 13.8, that's still significantly different than 162. And the aliphatic hydrocarbon blends, they're all the way down there at one. They won't dry out the xylene substitutes 
will not dry out your tissue. They've got the solubility for lipids, so they can dissolve the lipids, but that they need more time because they're not that super duper of a lipid solubility. They need the more time. They can do it, but that's okay. They can sit in there and do it because while they're sitting in there and doing it, they're not drying out the tissue. They literally are just dissolving out the lipid molecule. So we've got that advantage now, the xylene substitutes. They don't dry out your tissues. So let's go over to cover slipping. All right, we need to have that is totally compatible. All right, good practices in terms of making sure the slide's ready for cover slipping. You want your three stations of 100 so that you have removed all the water. So you don't have to worry about eosin bleeding or hazy slides. And then you're going to go into three stations of either your xylene or xylene substitute. That will take care of that. Now, the eosin bleeding, we already know it happens with xylene. Now, since the aliphatic hydrocarbons and the limonenes can't hold much water, that means if you carry over your final 100 in staining has any degree of water in it, the aliphatics can't absorb it to the degree xylene can, and you can get the eosin bleeding. Now, the formulations vary of the, xylene, of the aliphatic hydrocarbons out there, and there are going to be those that market themselves, and they're going to say, you know, you've got to make sure that you have anhydrous alcohols. But there are some of the aliphatic hydrocarbons that are on the market that the manufacturer has put an additive in so that the additive will absorb the moisture, just like xylene would. So shop around. If you like the odorless ones, go find the aliphatic hydrocarbons that have the additive in there to mimic what xylene can do. And that way you can eliminate the theosin bleeding. Now, stain compatibility, the only one we've got a problem with is limonenes, because as I told you, it can react with the eosin, okay? And it'll cause the eosin to fade or just really totally disappear. You can eliminate that by making sure you've got the antioxidant either in the limonene, the xylene substitute, or in the Maui media. And I would say probably 70% of all the Maui medias or even higher that are on the market, they all have an antioxidant added to it. That's just there so that we can have these hematoxin stain slides for 10, 15 years and they're not fading. That's what if the antioxidant was always put in the Mountie media for long-term storage of our stain slides. And we know the antioxidants always have a limited thing. Some of you have probably gone and pulled out old, old H&Es and you've seen that they faded. They faded because the antioxidant that was in the Mountie media got exhausted. So what about the Mountie medias? Is the Mountie medias you're using totally compatible with the xylene substitute? Well, we know they are with the xylene because they were formulated to work that way. The Mountie medias you use have either have a resin in them, and that's what's drying up, but the resin is dissolved and either xylene or toluene. So that's the solvent. That's the liquid of the Mounty media. All right. Well, xylene, toluene is going to be totally compatible with all the Mounty media. I mean, all the xylene substitutes, liquids with liquid. What we have to be concerned about is the resin that's in that Mounty media. The resins over the years have totally changed. We now have fast drying Mounty medias. Those are having to do because it's dealing with the acrylic resin versus the old, old days of the Mountie medias that were quite yellow, the Permount, that was a pinene resin. And it's the resins that we need to make sure that are totally soluble. Yes, they're, that they're soluble with the xylene substitute. When xylene substitutes first came out on the market in the mid-1980s, there was a limited number of Mountie medias that you could use with them. Currently now, you're probably up to a choice of at least 20 different Mounty medias. So your choices right now are totally, are much more open for you. But as you go and look at a xylene substitute, you need to check with the manufacturer and find out if the current Mounty media you are using is compatible with it. Every, every manufacturer has a list. If they're selling a xylene substitute, they have a list. Their tech support has a list telling you these are the mounting medias that are totally compatible. And like I said, the list is huge. So generally, people are not having to switch their mounting media at all. Safety-wise, 
what, except for chloroform, which we know is carcinogenic, the limonene and the aliphatic hydrocarbons, neither one of those are in the benzene family, which is what xylene is in. The aliphatic hydrocarbons is a skin irritant. And the reason why it's a skin irritant is because it's soluble with lipids. It can dry out your skin. You've got oils on the surface of your skin, so they're going to dry out, all right? That's why they're a skin additive. The aliphatic hydrocarbons have multiple uses outside of histology. Um, in the, when they first got introduced in the 1980s, they were actually used as a solvent that they would put a pesticide in, and then they would spray the, the crops. So they would spray the apples after they had developed on the trees so that bugs wouldn't eat them. And the pesticide would be there, but then it, the aliphatic hydrocarbon solvent would dissolve, would evaporate away. There may be some residues left, but it was already reported that they're totally washable and they're totally safe. Some of my current research in is that some of these aliphatic hydrocarbons are actually a part of some food additives. So they are totally safe, all right, unlike xylene, where we saw all those papers being published. And then, as I told you, depending upon the length of the hydrocarbon chain, some of them on a physical level, they're not even flammable. So you don't even have to worry about special storage conditions for it. What about the cost? So I went and looked up one of the companies online. And this was a company that sold both standard xylenes, all right? And they also had a xylene substitute. And their xylene substitute was an aliphatic hydrocarbon. Look at the difference of the price. This is, was not the case years ago. Xylene substitutes used to cost a lot more. Now, an aliphatic hydrocarbon for this one company is cheaper per gallon than xylene is. So we can't, the costs are con quite competitive. Um, shipping charges, if you're dealing with an aliphatic uh, xylene substitute that's flammable, you're still going to have the same flammable charges that you have with xylene. If you pick an aliphatic hydrocarbon or a xylene substitute that is not flammable, look at the savings that will be right now. To have shipped um, UPS, FedEx, it costs $35 per box as a hazard surcharge. Now, if you just say, okay, well, I've got company A who they've got their own truck, they're not going to charge me that hazard surcharge. That's correct. However, the box that the flammable liquid goes in has to go through special testing. And even though the box could be used year after year, manufacturers must have their boxes tested every two years. And the box has to go through these tests to make sure it can go through a drop test, a stacking test. What it is, it's indicating, listen, we know it's a hazardous material. They refer to it as a dangerous good. And it's put into a box that, that's not flimsy. Well, these boxes cost more than the standard boxes. So you're going to have something there in shipping overall cost. Recycling. I've already mentioned this, limonene is generally not recommended because of the complexity and the antioxidant. Um, the aliphatic hydrocarbons do a beautiful job. They're highly recommended and their chemistry does not change at all. So in review, technically, the xylene substitutes have advantages because they're not drying out your tissue. Safety-wise, bingo. They are, they are, you're not going to find a multiple number of papers and cost-wise they're actually more economical. All these pictures here that you are seeing, all were processed and stained using an aliphatic hydrocarbon xylene substitute. So you can see technically there is no difference at all, whether it's a standard H&E, we've got LC and blue there on the top right, and we've got immunohistochemistry on the bottom.